Hello and welcome to Universe in Mux 2. So today I have kind of a uh, funny suggestion here asking, make a football the size of Jupiter, then crash it into Jupiter. And uh, no real description after that, just kind of see what happens. So let's go ahead and throw a football at Jupiter. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and slow down time because this will happen way too quickly if I keep it at the uh, default time step. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the simulation. Now under the objects here, we have a football or a soccer ball. Depends where you are, what you want to call it. I'm sure people will probably argue about it, but for the sake of the video, we'll call it a football. Okay, so here is our football. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and copy the radius of Jupiter. And without changing the mass at all, I'm going to let it automatically determine the mass based off of the uh, current weight of the object at the moment. And it'll probably just multiply it. Oh wait, that's by centimeters. Let's go ahead and change this to kilometers. And hit enter, and there we go. Now we have a soccer ball the size of Jupiter. Now let's check the mass. 18.5 Earths in mass. Jupiter is 318, but it's moving at 10 kilometers per second towards the direction Jupiter is orbiting, or against the direction Jupiter is orbiting. So this is probably going to be a quite devastating collision. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that was a pretty nasty collision. It didn't really look uh, that spectacular, probably because it was just a uh, man-made object and not something like a planet, so it doesn't have the same destruction physics as planets, for example, do in the game. But it made Jupiter red hot, and it's currently 3200 degrees Celsius. And a lot of particles were ejected outwards, and Jupiter lost quite a bit of mass. Let's uh, go ahead and put side by side the original Jupiter, Jupiter for comparison. Here is a normal Jupiter. As you can see, it has lost a little bit in its radius. Its diameter is quite a bit smaller. And it has lost... Eighty-eight masses of Earth, so it's lost a lot of mass. Now, one thing I do want to check is I'm going to go ahead and re-enable the trails here. Let's see where the collision happened. Uh, I don't know if it's set off course at all. I guess I'd probably have to reload the simulation to see where it was originally orbiting. But let's view the orbits. Oh, and look at that! It's crossing orbits with Ceres now. Crazy. And it's also gained a little bit of an inclination. Very odd. That might have uh, long term effects on Ceres and maybe even the inner solar system since it's orbiting quite a bit closer. Interesting that a soccer ball the size of Jupiter would be able to do that. Let's go ahead and hit play and just uh, see if anything immediately happens. Well, uh, keep this up so we can watch the temperature decline. I didn't think of is it will be flinging a lot of these asteroids all around the solar system. Now I don't think I'm going to do a time lapse for this video but I think over hundreds of thousands of years this might have some significant effects on our inner solar system. For example I could imagine it pulling things like Mars out a little bit further and maybe even someday throwing it out of its current orbit. But this would happen over many million, or not, probably millions of years in fact. But as you can see, Ceres is 
being distorted all over the place. Same with Vesta. I don't see anything initially happening to Mars, though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear out the asteroids to kind of help the performance of the simulation. Go ahead and reselect Jupiter here to get it on the side. As you can see, it's all dark and distorted now, since the collision has distorted its uh, patterns of its clouds and gas. Vesta is now crossing paths with Mars. It's about to cross paths with Earth. Venus is being pulled closer to Earth. I think Venus just crossed Earth's orbital path. So yeah, this could be potentially devastating to our inner solar system. I think I am going to do a time lapse. I'm genuinely curious what the end result's going to be. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end the time-lapse there. That is about all the time I have for the time-lapse, and it looks like, uh, it's quite devastating. It's now a snowball. It's orbiting much further than it used to be. Let's see what its semi-major axis is. 1.08, so 8% more, 8% more distance than it usually orbits at. Uh, furthest point, which would be out here. Let's watch the temperature fluctuation as it becomes summer, which would be right here. So about 47 degrees Celsius. Wow, that is... It, it basically orbits way out here for the majority of the year, and it kind of warms up over here for a short period. But for the most part, Earth is not really going to defrost at all. It's now a snowball Earth because of that. Venus is now beyond Earth's orbit, and in fact, crossing paths. Very close, dangerously close, there might even be a collision between Venus and Earth in the future, but that didn't happen in the simulation as far as I know. Mars is very, very close to Earth now. Very close, in fact, a transit to Mars would not be all that difficult anymore. Ceres, I don't recall being this inclined, but now it is. It's orbiting in a kind of crazy orbit that somewhat crosses the path of Mars now. Vesta is now orbiting beyond Jupiter's orbit at some points, with a very high inclination. I wasn't really keeping track of Saturn or Uranus, and I deleted Neptune, I deleted a bunch of things too. 
uh, increase the performance of the simulation. So there's a lot of stuff that I removed because I figured there wouldn't be any significant factors. But yeah, that went from kind of a silly idea to something that is potentially very devastating for us and would extinct all pretty much mammal life on Earth. That is insane. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video and would like to see more, please subscribe and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.